I just wanted to be independent and not live at home. And I was just happy being aimless and traveling around, meeting new people, partying, drinking, having a really good experience while I was at it. My goal was just to earn enough money over the summer months so that I could ski all winter without having to do too much. I created my identity from being that daredevil risk taker. People knew me to be that guy that would jump bigger and, you know, not look at some of the risks, but just go for it. It was what I needed to keep me balanced. If I wasn't out there pushing it, I felt uh, like I was out of my element. Yeah, I had warnings, but I didn't heed them. After I finished high school, I started chasing down my dream, which was to be a professional skier. Moved to Whistler in 98, did a couple years with the BC Freestyle team. I moved into coaching. After a couple years of that, I found myself in a wheelchair. My name's Josh Duick. I'm a T11 complete paraplegic, which means I can't walk anymore. It means I can't go to the bathroom anymore. It means I'm kind of fucked up. It was a uh, Monday morning in the middle of spring and imagine yourself going up to Silver Star in Vernon. It's a beautiful ski resort, not a cloud in the sky. The sun was shining, it's about 10 degrees. It was a good day to be skiing. The first jump of the day should always be a safety jump. Check out the in-run speed, check out the trajectory of the jump, feel the landing hill out. I had one jump only one jump that I could afford the time for. I wanted to do a front flip. That was my signature trick. I've been doing it for years. You know, people kind of knew me by it, and I felt that it was a good way for me to inspect the jump. It's a bird's eye point of view, right? You lay out flat like Superman. You get the best view of the world. It's, it's a rush. It's really good. I set up for the trick and uh, went down the in-run, and about halfway down the in-run, realized that I was going a bit faster than I expected. I got to the transition, realized I was going way faster than I, I could handle. And off the end of the jump, I, I panicked. And uh, I, I did the front flip, and it was huge. I cleared the 50-foot gap between the end of the jump and the start of the landing hill, and I was still going up. I should be coming down right now, but I was going up. By then, I shit my pants. I started to flail in the air and uh, prematurely started the front flip. I over-rotated the front flip and completely overshot the landing hill. I fell over 100 vertical feet. That's like falling off the top of a 10-story building onto my face. Oh my God! He's down, he's down, he's down. I broke my neck, suffered a serious concussion, and dislocated my back, which completely severed my spinal cord. I, I wasn't fully aware of what happened to me, but I knew that I crashed hard. Nobody had told me for sure yet, but I knew in my heart that whatever I did was, was really bad. And uh, I was scared. I was too scared to react. I was freaked out. If you're in the hospital, you wake up, there's lights on you but you can't talk. You know, my mouth functioned, but it hurt too much to even think about talking. That's the kind of pain I'm talking about. Not, not a, a bee sting, not anything little like that. We're talking a million times worse than the worst pain you've ever felt. My whole body was carved open, broken apart, and rebuilt. I had two rods and, and 14 bolts put into my back to stabilize the brake. They gave me a drug seven times the strength of morphine. It didn't work. I had 13 different tubes going in and out to keep my body alive. The only thing I could muster out of my mouth was asking my dad to pull the plug. You know, once I realized that I was paralyzed and couldn't control the pain that I was in, I didn't want to live. 
I really wanted to end it. Like I, I couldn't handle it. It was too much. I didn't think I had a future. It was gone. What's my life going to be like? How am I going to work? What am I going to do to make money? I can't feel my friggin' cock. Wow, you know, you're laying there in bed and the nurse comes in and uh, she sticks her finger up your ass to scoop out your shit. Well, if she was, you know, hot little blonde, it might have been acceptable, but it was a 250 pound Russian man. It didn't feel too good, and I don't think it would have felt good if it was anybody, but it really didn't feel good to have a grown man cleaning my bowels out for me because I, I couldn't control them. I couldn't get up to go to the bathroom. That I had a tube sticking out of my dick. That's how I go to the bathroom. That's how I go to the bathroom today. It's harsh. You know, I, the only person I had to blame was myself. You know, I could look at my boss for not supervising me more carefully, not looking out for my best interest. But he knew I knew how to do the job. But whatever, it's my life, I'll do what I want. I used to not plan things, I used to just go with the flow. It's how I like to live my life and now everything's got a plan, a rhyme or a reason. I take the lift outside of my house, I break down my wheelchair, I get in my car, I reach in my pocket, I realize I forgot my fucking keys. I put my wheelchair back together, I go back up my lift, I get the keys, I come back down the lift, I get back into the car. Shit, late for my appointment. I have to be so careful about everything that I do. Everything is so thought out and methodical, which is not who I am. You know, it's who I have to force myself to be now. 36 hours of hell waiting for surgery. For what? For one, one lousy front flip? 